thanks for watching and today we'll evaluate another really cool sum. This time we calculate the sum of 1 over m to the fourth. So let's find the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over m to the fourth, which is the sum of the reciprocals of fourth powers. So 1 over 1 to the fourth plus 1 over 2 to the fourth plus 1 over 3 to the fourth etc, etc. And this is another one of those formulas that your calculus instructor told you it's finite, but now we can actually find a sum because we're cool like that. And this time what we want to do, we want to derive a Percival identity, but for the cosine series, just to illustrate how things work for cosine series. So here's the setting. So once again, suppose this time f has a cosine series expansion. So f is the sum from 0 to infinity of am cosine of mx, once again, under interval 0, 1. Although, by the way, you can really do it on any interval. The same trick would work. Now, the good news is everything we learned about the sine series also applies for the cosine series, but we just have to be careful of the special case, which is m equals zero. So just beware, there is a special case, which is m equals zero, because in that case, if you take the length of cosine mx squared, Remember, before we found pi over 2, but here we have something slightly different because this is the length of cosine 0 x squared, and which is really the integral from 0 to pi cosine 0 x times cosine 0 x dx. Now the function its side is 1, and so the integral here is pi and not pi over 2. Pi over 2. Whereas for the other cases, the integral was pi over 2. And that's why we just have to slightly modify the a0 term, and we end up getting the following Parseval identity. So here, Parseval's identity becomes the following. If your function is a cosine series, so sum from m from 0 to infinity of am cosine mx on the interval 0, comma pi, then once again, you just have to be careful of the a0 term. We get that 2 times a0 squared and then plus sum from 1 to infinity of a m squared, and now it's still 2 over pi, times the integral from 0 to pi of f of x squared. So this is what you would get if you derive Parseval's identity similar to the previous videos in the playlist. Okay. Which, once again, the modification of 2 here comes from the fact that cosine mx dotted with itself in the special case is pi and not pi over 2. And now, let's apply it to a very special function. So let's apply this to the function f of x equals x squared. x squared. Then what you get is a0. Remember, not 2 over pi, but 1 over pi. Integral from 0 to pi of f of x dx. So x squared dx, which is 1 over pi, and then I believe pi cubed over 3. And so this is pi squared over 3. And am, I'm not going to do this, but similarly to what we did before, am is 2 over pi, 
integral from 0 to pi, x squared, cosine mx. Yet, so for instance, you can use tabular integration for that. And I believe what we get, I might be mistaken, I think we get 4 over m squared and then minus 1 to the m. And then using that, let's just plug into both sides of parcels of identity and see what we get. So once again, this is Parseval's identity, and those are the coefficients we found. So now, let's just apply this. So let's look at the left-hand side. 2a0 squared plus the sum from m from 1 to infinity of am squared. So that becomes 2 times pi squared over 3. Square, so it's already positive, so we can remove the absolute value plus the sum from 1 to infinity of 4 over m squared minus 1 to the m squared. Once again, minus 1 to the m is just plus minus m, so plus minus 1, sorry. And so if you square this, you get 1. And so what we're left with is 2 times pi to the fourth over 9, and then plus the sum from 1 to infinity of, I believe, 16 over m to the fourth, and then that 16 once again comes out, and we're left with 2 pi, if you want, 2 ninths, pi to the fourth plus 16, and then the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth. Which again, it's a good sign because that's precisely the sum that we wanted to find. So that was on the one hand. On the other hand, let's evaluate that integral. So let me try to do it here. 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi f of x squared dx that becomes 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi. So f of x is x squared. So if you square it, you get x to the fourth. The x, and kind of what this gives you, that is 2 over pi, and then pi to the fifth over 5, and which simplifies nicely again. So I think we get 2 fifths pi to the fourth. And then all you have to do, you have to equate this line with this line and then see what we get. So once again, if you set both sides equal, you get the following identity, which now you can solve for our famous sum. So what we get is 16 times the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over m to the 4th. It's 2 fifths pi to the 4 minus 2 ninths, pi to the 4. And then what we now get, end up getting is sum from 1 to infinity, 1 over m to the 4th is 1 over 16. And then we get 2 fifths minus 2 ninths, minus 2 ninths, pi to the 4. Now, the 2's cancel out with the 16 to get an 8, so we get pi to the 4th over 8, 1 fifth minus 1 9, and then we get pi to the 4th over 8, and then let's see, 9 minus 5 over 45, and I think that simplifies, so 9 minus 5 becomes 4, and the 4 cancels out with the 8 to get an extra factor of 2. And so in the end, what is that sum? It's just pi to the 4th over 90. Oh, who would have known that we can really explicitly calculate this sum? And the cool thing is, the more power functions you take, 
the more fun sums we have. And by the way, you may ask, so we calculated the sum of one over m squared, the sum over one over m to the fourth. We can also do the sum of one over m to the sixth, m to the eighth. But you may wonder, what about the following sum? The sum from one to infinity of one over m cubed. It turns out this problem has been open for hundreds of years and is still unsolved. No one really knows what the answer is, but maybe you can find out what the answer is. Let's see. And by the way, unfortunately, someone asked, we can't really apply this to the function x to the three halves because then you would have to evaluate that integral, which is a bit of a pain to do in this case. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.